Donald Trump's power lies not in government right now, he's not president. I know millions of Americans don't think that's true, but he's not the president. But what he can do is support candidates. And he has loved to consider himself to be a kingmaker in the Republican Party, wielding the threat of helping someone be primaried if they go against him or boosting candidates so that they win. Well, uh, earlier this week, his candidate, Susan Wright, in a Republican runoff in Texas, a congressional race, lost to Navy veteran Jake Elsey. And he had supported Susan Wright. He did rallies for Susan Wright. He put out mailers and did calls for Susan Wright. He endorsed her more than two months before the election. And in fact, when he endorsed her, some polls at that point had her up as much as 17 points over Elsey. And yet, the Trump opposed candidate ended up winning. So my question to the panel is, is this the beginning of the end? Or more importantly, how many of these sorts of picks would have to go wrong for him before some Republicans started to grow something reminiscent of a spine and stopped fearing that if they oppose him on literally anything, that could be the end of their, of their career? Do you think that that's possibly coming? How would that look if it were to come? Yeah, well, look, I think this is a really interesting story, and the jury's still out. Look, it, it, one angle is what John is talking about, where the Republicans grow a spine, because, but it's not really growing a spine. It's just realizing, oh, he's not as powerful as we thought he was, so there's gonna be less consequences. If I thought there was gonna be consequences, I would put away my spine right away. Mm -hmm. If you're a Republican, they proved it, right? But to me, the other interesting part of it is, when can we start ignoring Donald Trump? Because I, the only reason I pay attention to him is because I'm worried he's gonna win again. I'm worried about his overwhelming influence on the Republican Party. And I'm worried that he can get any Republican elected or unelected. And, and hence his influence on the Republican Party and his influence on the country. But if I thought he had no power in the Republican Party, I'd drop him like a bad habit and I would be thrilled to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I'd never cover him again. Uh, so this is interesting, it's just one data point. But if he endorses a bunch of people in primaries and they don't win, <laughs> that's great news. That's great news for everybody, including our audience, because then you see a lot less of him. Because then he that means he's lost his power and he's lost his relevance. And uh, but as to why this candidate lost, that's a huge mystery. Yeah. But I'm gonna let Maz weigh in. Well, uh, first of all, I'll piggyback on what you said. I will say the moment he got banned from Twitter, I just feel like there was this big sigh world side just like ah uh. and suddenly my life was not as stressful as it had been for 4 years when the world is burning anyway and some nut job wakes up every morning with 50 new tweets that have nothing to do with what's going on in the world but he's going to throw it right in your yeah. face and you're like how dare he said and now you're going nuts thank god first of all ah uh, that made me do that then when i saw more coverage of him recently i'm going oh god let's not cover this guy anymore because we're giving him oxygen but to your point, Jank, there is danger there. So the danger needs to be covered. And yeah. hopefully people start to grow a spine. They start to realize that this guy doesn't have as much power. They're saying in the article that the, the organization that convinced him to endorse the candidate who lost was an organization called Club for Growth, mm -hmm. which always I find very interesting that these clubs or these organizations are very much against things that are good, always use these positive terms <laughs> like club for growth, unless you're LGBTQ or women's rights or people of color or any of that stuff, club for growth. You know, you look them up because one of the things they stood for is that they're, they're supporting candidates who are not for COVID protocols. Mm -hmm. So they're club for growth, meaning, okay, we want the economy to grow, but we also want our people to die. So. Not really for growth, maybe your club for death, I yeah. don't know. But it's interesting with the name. Now here's the most interesting part. The dude, I'm not gonna say his name, I'm trying not to say his name. Even though his guy lost in the article, he goes, it wasn't really a loss. It was two Republicans going against each other, so it's a win-win. This guy uses the technique, <laughs> I use that technique with my kids. When they argue with me, I go, no, 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 this is my house, so I'm right. You're wrong, I'm right. This guy thinks he's everybody's dad. He's not everybody's dad. And we gotta start pointing out that out to people yeah. and kick him the hell out and put him wherever. The only time I want to hear his name is 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 when it's followed by guilty. That's it. <laughs> so I must stay. 
Yeah, so, no, I'm saying, <laughs> club for growth is uh, their only purpose is to cut taxes for uh, rich people in this country. And so that's that's why they do it. But the Republicans are the exact opposite of Democrats in one way. It has an upside, it also has a downside. They rip each other to shreds endlessly. Democrats never, oh my God, oh my beloved colleagues, they never criticize each other to a, very much to a fault, right? Uh, Mansion and cinema should be criticized. Biden and Pelosi should be criticized at different times, right? Uh, whereas the Republicans are like, oh, you looked at me kind of funny. Oh, I hate you, <laughs> right? So now everybody's out there going, oh, call for growth, screw Donald Trump. Oh, David McIntosh, who runs it, oh, he's the worst. Oh my God, call for growth. Rick Perry's like, oh my God, uh, they should not darken the doors of Texas anymore, right? So they're like, <laughs> like, it's not Trump because the beloved dear leader can never be criticized. He has no anus like Kim Jong Un um, or Kim <laughs> Jong Il actually. Uh, and so, but so since they can't criticize Trump, they're like this club for I'm so mad at him because they gave beloved Donald Trump bad advice. Trump would have been perfect and immaculate if it wasn't for them, right? But guys, the most interesting question is why did Susan Wright lose? Susan Wright had won the first round, Texas basically two rounds of elections, yeah. two rounds of primaries. And she had won the first round, she'd beaten the same guy. She lost, and she was up by 10 to 15 in the polling. And then, and Trump endorsed her many times, as John pointed yeah. out. There was no reason at all for her to lose. It was a kind of a safe thing for Trump to do, oh, you're up by 15, sure, I'll endorse you, and then I'll pretend I did it, right? So we're looking into it and we're gonna try to get somebody on the conversation to talk about how the why this race turned out the way that it did. Because if it's she lost because of Trump, that would be a whole different thing and that would be a massive change within the Republican Party. But we don't know that yet.